Welcome back you 7,000 lovers of common sense and the 60% of you who haven't subscribed yet to my review of the latest Watchtower film, Commit Your Way to Jehovah. The first JW movie filmed in Africa. It was shown to the attendees of the 2023 Pursue Peace Convention and despite the name, this film is everything but peaceful. In fact, it's the most violent movie ever produced by Jehovah's Witnesses, despite their obsession over not showing violent stuff to their kids. So pull out the popcorn guys, sit your ass down, and let me take you through this atrocity together. Don't forget we're still doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's go. Of course, the movie starts out with the most stereotypically African music possible, something straight out of a Lion King ripoff. Wow. This music is good. Africa is an entire continent. I'm sure their music catalog is much more extensive than this. Although, to be fair, the score does get better as the movie goes on. There are a few cinematic shots like this throughout the movie, and I really mean just a few. <laughs> the first few minutes are pretty chill. Amane and his son are strolling through the market. They say hello to some brothers at the cart who can't even afford a placard. <laughs> Just the JW.org logo. But at least they have like one Bible on display. Oh, thank you. Oh, how are you doing? Good. How are you two doing? Oh, the baby kept me up all night. Oh. Oh. Kicking again, huh? <laughs> yes. How's the family doing today? Oh, they're doing good. Oh. Can you get some water is okay. making dinner. Uh, <laughs> we have family worship today too, so oh. yeah. You and Amani are such good parents. Always teaching. Oh. It, it, it takes a lot of patience mm -hmm. and practice. Mm. Yeah, indoctrinating children into a doomsday cult is not easy for sure. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, you're going to be a great mother. I can already tell. Thank you. And you won't be alone. We'll be here to help you. Mm. We want to help you teach your child about Jehovah. Mm. You're part of our family now. In other words, we want your child to also join our doomsday cult when he grows up. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Sifa! Hey, Amani. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, good. Are you going to be staying for dinner? No, no, no. I just wanted to say hi. Are we still on for our Bible study tomorrow? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you. Bye, see you. Sifa. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you. Poor woman doesn't know what she's getting into. You're doing so great with her. Thank you. It's Uncle Tania. Hey. Oh, wow, good, good, how are you? Good. Wow. Now we get introduced to Uncle Dunya, who is obviously not a Jehovah's Witness because he is wearing an Africa necklace around his neck. <laughs> and this is not the first time Watchtower portrays a worldly African man with this type of necklace. <laughs> how dare you be proud of your home continent, you wicked worldly sinner. Also, it's quite unfortunate that most of these shots at the beginning of the movie look way too underexposed, way too dark. You're working with black actors. Use some studio lights so they don't just blend into the background. Or maybe the movie department at Bethel is just so used to working with white men all of the time. Amani, th there's something we have to talk about. Let me ask. How steady has your work been lately? My carpentry work has been slow, but we're getting by. Mm. You know, my and I, we sell uh, wood carvings at the market for some extra income. Amani, look at all you've done on our land. You're a good carpenter. You built this house. And you have a beautiful family too. 
if mom and dad were alive, they would be very proud of you. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, Amani? With your skill set, you could have more. I'm talking about real security for you and the family. A real government carpentry contract. See, this is the amount we can be making. Yes? Yes, for real. All you need to do, Amani, is just... Yeah. No, not a party card. You know I can't sign this. Wait. You didn't sign me up, did you? I know what you're thinking about, Amani. See, you don't have to involve yourself with the political leaders. You don't even have to attend any of the rallies. You know what, forget it. I'll take care of this one. Basically, you'll be working for me. So, don't worry about the card. All I need you to do is just sign here. And this becomes a reality for us. Amani, you know I love you. And if you become successful, I will be very happy. I have to get back. But just think about it. And think about the family too. Hmm? So this is the main conflict behind the story. Watchtower calls for all Jehovah's Witnesses to remain politically neutral. This means no voting, no military service, no singing the national anthem, no protesting, no siding with political parties, and not even having a personal opinion on politics. Yes, not even your thoughts are safe. Now you might think, Panda, this sounds super unpractical and harsh, and you would be right, dear viewer. As I mentioned in this previous video, this dogmatic approach to political neutrality has sometimes gotten Jehovah's Witnesses into a lot of trouble with the law. Especially in Malawi back in the early 70s, wherein Jehovah's Witnesses who refused to identify with the ruling party of Malawi were subjected to beatings, torture, and even death. That's why Amane is so against this lucrative job opportunity because taking the job would mean he supports a certain political party, which is a big no-no in JW land. Are you crazy? That's my wife! Now the family is doing family worship with an elder from the congregation, Musa, talking about the story of Joseph, who ironically became deeply involved in Egyptian politics. And of course, being a good JW dad, Amane must remind his kids that they're living in the last days. Prayer is very essential, especially for a family, if we're going to endure these last days. What about Uncle Dania? Does he pray to Jehovah? You know, maybe, but we can't look into his heart. Yeah. Musa taught us both when we were boys. So he knows about Jehovah, but no one can make him love Jehovah. Yes, I remember those days. Your father and Uncle Denier, they were trouble. <laughs> Both of them were so independent. I wish I had done more to help Denier. We haven't given up on him yet. Instead of respecting Uncle Dunia's decision to not be a JW, Amani instead sees him as a potential recruit. That's the curse of having JW family members. They're gonna constantly see you as a potential convert instead of, you know, seeing you as a thinking person. <laughs> Dad, can I play some music? Yeah, sure, grab it. As an update to our report from yesterday, militia groups are threatening to take over the capital. Violence has been escalating in the area. Nah. Now let's go to our correspondent. There's no need to worry. Okay. But will they come here? No. These are just threats, rumors. There's nothing to it. Listen, change the station. Why don't you play us some music? Yeah. Certified free. 
Seven days a week. Wet and gushy. Make that pullout game weak. I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother, so much for making the time to come tonight so we can talk about an important matter. As you are aware, the branch has recommended that we meet and discuss the possibility of civil unrest in our area. You know, just yesterday, the marketplace was buzzing. There will always be rumors surrounding the elections. But you know, I even heard of some reports on the radio. I want us to see what the threat is in our area and what we can do for the friends so we can help them if they decide to flee. Wait, did they direct us to leave? or ask us to think about it? Well, they have advised us to have a plan. The way people are feeling about the current leadership now, it's just a matter of time that a conflict will come in this area. The safety of the congregation is the concern. Mm. Yes, I agree with that. And, you know, I've heard about the violence of these militias towards other tribes. But is it worth alarming the congregation? Uh, has anyone actually seen anything out of the ordinary here. This is serious. Where there is smoke, there's fire. I'm sorry. That's what I'm trying to say. Telling the friends to flee now? Brothers, I've been through this before. And trust me, there isn't even smoke here. Doesn't this seem a bit hasty? Yes, Musa. Brothers, we may differ in our opinions. But remember, we are still one body. Think about the times that we live in. These are the last of the last days. Wow, he's like a black Stephen Lett. So we expect that these conditions would increase. As if Africa hasn't been plagued by tribal conflicts since the very beginning of humanity. <laughs> Thank you so much, Musa. You've helped us to have a unified thought in this matter. So if it is okay with you brothers, I have an exit plan. I brought a map of our territory and where the brothers and sisters live and where they can flee to. Let's look at it together. Amani's opinion has been completely ignored because it didn't conform to the majority boys. Everyone just agreed with the opinions of the oldest dude, which kind of shows you how elders take decisions behind closed doors. Okay, big guy. It's getting late. Time for bed. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. Amani! Amani, wake up! We have to go right now! I've been through this before. And trust me, there isn't even smoke here. Are you okay? Yeah. Imagine being a JW in Africa watching this movie, who experienced displacement and having to relive some trauma because of this movie. Lamest way to trigger PTSD. Money, I'm worried. Trust me. In a couple of weeks, this thing will just blow over. You think so? Yeah. Just wait. You'll see. The following day. Homie, we need to go. Dad. We just got here. I know, but we are leaving. What happened? What are you so scared of? Isn't Jehovah protecting you? I'm here. My brother, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you have to meet this man. <laughs> Bakari! No. Bakari! Dunia, wait. <laughs> I, I wanted to talk to you about <laughs> it. You meet him first. <laughs> Dunia, my man. Yeah. That's my brother. <laughs> so, you are a man. Yes. I hear you are quite talented. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> We're excited to work with you. And that must be your boy. Hello. Yeah. 
Are you ready to work with your dad with all this new work and huge contract coming his way? You are our country's future. Remember that. Thank you. Listen, Dunia, I'm sorry. I appreciate this offer, but I can't accept it. He doesn't know what he's saying now. Um, we can still work out the details, and then he'll come back. He's okay. See all those people out there? Yeah. They would love to work with me. This is not an offer you refuse. And you, you said this was all done and you had it all covered. He'll be fine. Fix it! And don't waste my time. Vinia, you, you have to let me explain. Explain what, Amani? How could you embarrass me like that in front of him? You don't understand. Understand what? This is a lifetime deal for the family. You see why I don't bring big contract to you? I can't believe you. How could you refuse that? Hold on, hold on. In front of him. I can't believe this. Yakobo. Yakobo. You there? So part one of the movie is quite uneventful, it's just things are starting to get volatile, things are starting to pick up, but part two is where everything just kind of explodes. Now let me take a short 15 second intermission from the action because I want to thank everyone who has recently supported me on Patreon and YouTube. Guys, I asked for your support and you guys came through, thank you so much. And if you, handsome viewer, would also like to support the channel with only $1 a month, please catch me on Patreon or join the YouTube channel, you gain early access to all my work and you help me keep doing this for years to come. Your support, even if it's just $1, goes a long way. Thank you so much once again. Now let's get back to the movie. This is how we do action in Uganda. It's so dramatic. This film takes itself way too seriously. Dad, I'm hungry. When are we going to eat something? You should be worried that something's gonna eat you. <laughs> Mayombi, be nice to your sister. You two have to start looking out for each other. Okay, even on the road, people are looking to hurt us. The rebels should be searching the road. And we have to stay close together. Do not let us out of your sight. Have you been able to reach anyone? There's barely enough signal to send a text, let alone call anyone. I was able to get a text from Inoko this morning. We should be able to catch up to them soon. Hopefully by tomorrow. Dad, how much longer do we have to walk? Can you shut the fuck up? It's going to be a while still, Zuadi. Here, baby. I have a mango for you. Meombi, stay close. Dad! Come on, son. You need to keep moving. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this... How is this even remotely kid-friendly? Mind you, there's little toddlers in the audience watching this. 
I know you can barely see the body and there's no blood, but come on, really, should we really be showing this to kids? <laughs> There's a lot of walking in this film, by the way. Walking through grass, walking through rivers, walking through grass with a gun. They just had to fill in the runtime somehow. Hey, shh! Quick! Hey! Hurry, hurry! Quickly! Get down! Come on, let's go. Kojo, come on, let's go. That had to be the most incompetent goon in the history of cinema. This is like stormtrooper level or bad. <laughs> Stay still. The following day. It's Musa. Children. Good to see you. Inoko. Oh, man. Musa. Amani. Oh. My son. Musa, can I talk to you about something? Sure, Amani. I am so sorry. I should have listened. My son. No one is perfect. Don't dwell on your mistakes. Jehovah is patient with us. We correct our mistakes and we move on. Take it from an old man. There are many more lessons to learn. <laughs> you are too kind to me, Musa. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, you're welcome, my son. You're welcome. I'm sorry, Musa, for being skeptical and not immediately submitting to the direction of the branch. Nia, do you remember the account of the Apostle Paul? No, 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 I don't, I don't. He traveled many miles for Jehovah. Does anyone remember some of the things that happened to him? He was shipwrecked. Four times, actually. Didn't people try to kill him? Yes. We know what that's like. I mean, Paul was never a refugee of war. He got stoned because he pissed off the Jews by preaching heresies in their synagogue. <laughs> Not the same thing. And the shipwreck was just bad luck, but go on. But Paul relied on Jehovah. He trusted him completely. His example teaches us that we can face dangerous situations 
and with Jehovah's help, we can make it through. Yeah, and he was executed for it. Paul's faith in God's promises help him to Hindu. You've been talking about these God's promises since we were kids. Hell, Christians have been talking about the return of Jesus for 2,000 years. JWs are not the only ones. Yes, Dunia. Old man was flabbergasted. It is true. I've been waiting on Jehovah's promises for a long time. Perhaps even longer than I expected. It wasn't immediate for Paul. But every one of Jehovah's promises came true. Are you going to mention one at least? Not one word of his has failed. It's the same today. Knowing Jehovah's promises helps us to endure these situations patiently. Uh, are you going to mention how that is? You learned these things when you were a child. Now you have grown up. Know that Jehovah loves you. He wants to protect you. Just like he protected Paul, right? Notice what he tells us in his word at Isaiah 48th chapter. Notice verse 17. I, Jehovah, am your God. That has to be some of the weakest apologetics I've ever seen. Holy cow. Musa didn't even bother answering his questions. Oh yes son, I've waited for Jehovah's promises my entire life. But I know they're gonna come true because other servants of God died without seeing the fulfillment of the promises. And his promises never fail. <laughs> what? Here, let's read this verse written by some dude from the Iron Age that has no relevance on us today. Jehovah wants to protect us, trust me, although he didn't want to protect that dude in the ditch or the hundreds of witnesses that died in Malawi. And Dunia just nods his head along, because of course he does. Brothers, I was about to get a text from your Kobo. It seems most from the congregation have made it across the border. Oh, that's wonderful news. How's the situation there? You know, with so many fleeing, uh, the camp is overwhelmed. But our brothers are there waiting to get in. It's good to know that they've made it safely and are united. Jacobo even mentioned that there's a small kingdom hall and a congregation inside the camp. But that's all the message said. But brothers, it's good to know that we aren't far off. I'm so sorry I'm slowing the group down. I'm not as strong as I used to be. Nonsense, Musa. We're all in this together. Yeah. Brought you some water. Okay. You know, we were thinking. Let's stop and rest here for a few days before we continue on to the camp. I don't think I can continue. Of course you can. We will help you. Oh, money. I can. I am too weak. I'm not ready to say goodbye. This is not goodbye. See you in hell. Remember, Amani, your strength will be in keeping calm and showing trust. Jehovah will fulfill his promises. Just be patient.
we can read his promises to me. I would like to get his voice. Not gonna lie, this is a bit emotional, especially knowing Musa is just gonna go back to the earth without ever knowing that he was conned by some white dude thousands of miles away. Son, Jehovah will always be with you. All you have to do is just trust in him. Just like Musa did. Musa literally just died. Musa was strong because of his spiritual routine. He gained power from reading God's word regularly. The group then proceeds to give Musa a quick funeral. They probably don't even talk about his life, they just reiterate Watchtower doctrine about paradise. There's some more walking, and this chick decides to have birth pains in the worst possible time. Bombi, can you help me get more firewood? There is good news. Things have settled back home. Dunia, not right now. Come on, keep up. I was speaking with a group up there. They have enough supplies. We can join them and go back. Dunia, do you see Sifa? We need to get Sifa help. We need to get her in the camp as soon as possible. We don't have to live in the camp. We can have everything all back. The house, the land, even the job. Dunia, wait, up. wait. Shh. Kids, run! <laughs> Goodbye, little sheep. That dude is so dead. Well, eh, he was gonna die anyways at Armageddon. But he just got a head start. Just a truly horrifying sequence of parents dealing with the loss of their children. What a depressing film. You remember when we were kids on the road fleeing? That was the only place we knew to go. Home. I know for sure that these kids are heading back home. Amani, trust me on that. I, I don't know. Amani, wake up. We've searched everywhere for the kids. And look at Sifa. She is suffering. Where is Papa Musa now? We just buried Papa Musa. He is dead. Wake up! Are you still trusting these people to guide your life? Yeah, Amani needs to wake up. Remember, Amani. Your strength will be in keeping calm and showing trust. I'm certain that Jehovah will fulfill his promises. Just be patient. No, Dunia. I thought I knew best. Look, I put my family in danger when I ignored direction. But you know what? These people love Jehovah. And it's Jehovah who is guiding our lives. I'm trusting in Jehovah. We are continuing on to the camp. Amani, I'm very, very sorry then. I can't help you then. As for me, I am going home. Dunia! 
Dunia. Oh, Dunia's probably gonna die since he didn't follow the direction of the branch. Father Jehovah, please help me. I got my fear. Super kicker. What's happening? Where's Where's Dunia? He left. He left? He's going back. What about the children? We're gonna find them. They could be anywhere. I know, love. But they are not alone. Jehovah is going to help them. The money is right and we'll keep searching for them in the direction of the camp. This would be a good time for us to ask for Jehovah's help. Why don't we do that? And we'll ask Jehovah to care for the kids as well. Okay? How insufferable. The biggest of ironies. Amane has been demonizing government groups for the entire film, but now he depends on a government agency to provide him with relief. Noko, please stay with her. We'll, we'll keep looking for the kids, okay? Okay. Sifa, they'll take care of you, okay? Okay. Oh. I'll go ahead and see if somebody has seen the kids, okay? Excuse me. Have you seen these two around here? This one? About this tall? No? No. And the girl? No. No? You seen these two kids? Mm, no. Girl is about this tall? Not even on the way here? No. Amani, look. It's the brothers. That's so nice. Zawadi? Zawadi! 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 Well, that's the end. Thank you for coming, guys. The exit's gonna be to your right. Oh, what? There's a few more minutes of film? And they're the cultiest part? So proud of you, my little man. <laughs> Thank you. You are so brave. You took good care of Zawadi while you two are out there alone. What, Dad? How much longer do we have to be here? We don't know. We just have to wait, patiently. But are we ever gonna go back home? Well, remember what Musa said. We have to commit our way to Jehovah. All of this is just temporary. What, did Jehovah just magically save this single tract to teach Dunia a lesson? Why couldn't he save the whole house? What does the Bible say Jehovah's promises are? That they're everlasting. Yeah, exactly. Forever. This camp life might not be ideal, but we're going to make the best out of it. But how? We just have to focus on what we have. We are safe. We have the brothers. You know the congregation. But most importantly, we have Jehovah. And we have each other. Of course. We do have each other. And we really are going to try to make this place feel like home. 
That would mean school for you and Zawadi. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and the ministry for all of us. Meetings, family worship. Not even being a refugee of war will spare you from meetings and field service, boys and girls. And helping those in need. And soccer. <laughs> of course, playing soccer. You love soccer too much. <laughs> you ready to show me what you got? Sure. Yeah, come on. Let's go. Committing our way to Jehovah requires faith and obedience. Our faith is not just a thought or feeling. For we are absolutely convinced that Jehovah's way of doing things is always right. We also show that we trust Jehovah when we obey the direction we receive from his organization. There it is guys, the purpose of the film promoting obedience to the organization. Because to Amani, putting faith in Jehovah means obeying the direction of the branch. Obedience to the organization means staying alive. Even though Jehovah's organization did absolutely nothing for Amani's family. Sure, they suggested fleeing the region after listening to the worldly news reports, but who set up the refugee camp that kept the family fed and secure? None other than Satan's government. And following the direction from the branch doesn't always end well. Remember the JWs in Malawi who followed the branch's directions to not get a political card and some of them died horrific deaths because of that? And the fact that Watchtower produced this movie with that Malawi context in the back of their minds is just so hurtful and borderline evil. <laughs> Uh, refugees of war are just so much easier to indoctrinate. It has not always been easy. But we have seen the blessing that comes from listening and obeying. We have to trust those whom Jehovah trusts. Even if we may not understand the direction at the time. That's the Jehovah's Witness version of drinking the Kool-Aid. Obey us even if our directions don't make any sense. Not even being a refugee of war is gonna spare you from donating to Watchtower. Why not just donate to the government agency who's running the camp instead? And where did these suits come from? Did the JWs fleeing just decide to pack full suits in their bags? In what fantasy universe do you live in where refugees get to dress so nicely? Strengthening our commitment to Jehovah now will cause us to obey him implicitly in the future. Please convince yourself every day that all of Jehovah's promises for the future will come true. And never forget the words of Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to Jehovah. Rely on Him. And He will act in your behalf. Poor souls escaped from tribal conflict, but they couldn't escape from Watchtower's wow. control. Our dear baptismal candidates, it's that time. We invite you to please stand.
This atrocity is finally over, but I have so much to say about it. First, let's judge it as a film. And to do this, we're gonna compare it to another film that takes place in Africa with somewhat similar themes, but which is actually good. Beasts of No Nation. This film, which you can find on Netflix, it's really good, gives a much more realistic portrayal of war. The rebel soldiers are ravaged by drugs, they're filthy, basically walking corpses. But the rebels in the Watchtower film are well kept, their uniforms are clean, they don't even look intimidating. I mean, I know Watchtower was not gonna show extreme violence or blood or use of drugs, but come on, could you at least put up some effort on the bad guys? Also, refugee camps are usually filthy, way overpacked, and plagued by thieves and petty fighting. But the camp in this film runs like clockwork to the point of being romanticized. This film is so unrealistic. The acting was alright compared to other projects, which isn't saying much in the first place, but the thing is there's not much acting at all because this movie is mostly silent. For every minute of building tension, you get like 10 minutes of people walking around and talking about the Bible. I mean, this movie should have kept us gripping our seats. It's a war movie, goddammit. There's way too much silence here. Good films like Beasts of No Nation don't let you breathe because there is no time to breathe during a war. But technical issues aside, this movie is terrible because it has no reason to exist. I mean, at least with past Watchtower projects, corny as they are, you could tell the message behind the film. But the message behind this film is wait on Jehovah, which is just so vague to the point that it's meaningless. Waiting on Jehovah could mean anything. And there's also no character arcs in this movie. Things just kind of happen to Amane. He's a passive protagonist. He starts out as a loyal JW and he ends up as a loyal JW. I mean, sure, he realizes that he was wrong to not listen to the branch's direction and flee early, but that's as much character development as he gets. His mistake had no real life consequences. And spoiler alert, a film with a protagonist that experiences no personal growth is boring. Take for instance David from your favorite movie, The Prodigal Returns. He starts out as an overconfident young man, screws up, hits rock bottom, and learns from his mistakes. In the course of the film, he becomes a different man. That's character growth. And this movie has none of it. Hell, the supporting characters don't have character arcs either. His brother stays a stubborn unbeliever, the son is still a goody two-shoes, and other characters are just kind of there. To me, this is the most bizarre film Watchtower has ever produced, and it really is unfortunate that the first project they undertake in Africa is just a stereotypical Blood Diamond film. Yes, tribal conflicts do happen in Africa way too frequently, but there's much more to the continent than that, you know? It's not all just bush and automatic weapons. So I give this movie a 3 out of 10 in the cold meter. Not the worst piece of propaganda ever, but kind of a pain to sit through. Uh, it only exists to scare current members into obedience. Obey your directions now, because doing so will save your life in the future. Same Watchtower propaganda, different coat of paint. Super Fighter! Yeah! Action party movie! So let me know what you thought of this movie in the comments below guys and don't forget to tell me when you lost the cringe challenge. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the finale of our convention rebuttals featuring none other than Steven Lett in the flesh. A special thank you to my beautiful Patreon community and everyone who has joined the channel recently. You guys are the best. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower.